Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you all you need to know about recurring journal entries in SAP s using Fiori. So we will explore how the Manage Recurring Journal Entries application works and I will show you how to create such a journal entry and then post the real recurring journal entries out of this one. Sounds good? Then let's get started. So we start here by searching for the application called Manage Recurring Journal Entries. Select this application and now you can see we are here in the start screen of our Manage Recurring Journals Entries application. First of all, click on the user icon and on the About section and here we can see that we are talking about the application called F1598. In case you can't see this application, then this is as always because you need to assign the necessary user roles to your user. You can check this via the so-called Fiori Reference Apps Library. Just search for the idea I've displayed you a second ago and then you will find the relevant roles. Okay. So far so good, over here you can see a filter section with filters such as the company code, the recurring journal entry, next posting date and so on. And by hitting on go, all the recurring journal entries according to our filters will be displayed. You can also see I could clear the filters like that or I could even adapt the filters and then choose the even more filters if necessary. If I don't want to see this upper section over here, I could always hide the filters like this. And please be aware that as always you can save the filters you inserted over here via this button. Just click on save as and then save it for you. So far so good. Down here you can see then the output according to our filters as said with all the recurring journal entries marked here in blue. So those are the actual documents. Please be aware that those recurring journal entries we create over here are not actual financial postings to the system. I will explain you more about this in a second. However, as of now you can see we could toggle here between different views to display even more information. We can utilize this symbol over here to insert more columns if necessary or we could also export the list over here to an excel spreadsheet or even to a pdf document so far so good before we now click on create new recurring journal entry let me show you something so we can mark here one of the already existing ones and we can either display it that so the information is being displayed let's go back we could edit it copy it or delete it if necessary but for now we will create a new one from scratch so we click on create new recurring journal entry you can see Lots of information was already pre-filled, such as the journal entry type, which is now set to SA, and the company code. We could even insert a ledger group if necessary, in case we want to post this recurring journal entry to a special ledger, let's say IFRS, or a group of ledgers, like say tax and local gap. For now we will leave it free. Then we have the transaction currency, this was automatically derived from the company code currency and we even have a conversion rule in case we are dealing with different currencies. There we could use the current exchange rate or a fixed exchange rate. For now this is fine. Then we have a reference and the header text field which are always optional in free text fields. Let's just say monthly rent. So we will now create a recurring journal entry for monthly rent. As you know and as the name suggests Recurring journal entries are for recurring postings. That will happen for instance monthly, such as the rent payment. Now we have here the line item section. Let's choose our first GL account, this one over here, office building rent, so an expense of let's say 1000. Please be aware that we can click here on this arrow to include more information such as the item text, rent, expense, then you can see the amount was converted automatically. As we have an expense account, I will also include here an input tax and then also at least an account assignment. Let's say we'll just take a cost center. That's basically it. We could also insert many more information like other account assignments such as profit center, WBS element and so on. And there's even a section for real estate. For now this is fine. We will collapse the view and insert our second line item, which is a bank account in this case. Let's say credit of 1000 and that's basically it. Now you can see automatically this new section appeared called tax items. We will click on calculate tax so that the tax amount is now included. We could even click on net entry. This would mean that the tax is not already included in this position here. Let me just show this to you. Now you can see here the tax is excluded and we would need to increase our credit posting by 190 euro. For now we will just say it's not a net entry. So the balance is green. Let's scroll down a bit. Now you can see the so-called recurrence rule. So we need to state when our recurring journal entry should start. Let's say from the 1st of April and then we can say whether it should occur monthly, weekly or by posting period. So if we set it to monthly, then this means that each and every month, so the 1st of April, 1st of May, 1st of June and so on, one posting will be generated. But this only counts because we set here every one month. We could also say every three months, every six months and so on. On the first day of the month, last day of the month or a specific date. For now we'll leave it as is. Then we will say that this recurring journal entry should end after let's say 12 occurrences. 
If we hit on enter, then everything is updated and we can see the end date is now set to the 1st of March 2026. We could even utilize the so-called posting schedule, but this would need to be defined in the customizing first. For now this is fine, we will scroll down a bit and here you can see what the system would post as of each month. So right now nothing is posted, but once we execute the recurring journal entry run, then this year will change and the system will post one journal entry up until the month we are currently in. So this is fine, we will now click on save. And you can see that recurring journal entry was saved in our company code. Please be aware that as said, this is not a financial posting yet. This is just a template for all of the recurring journal entries we will post in a second. So we will click on OK. Now you can see our recurring journal entry appears here in our list. So as said, we could also always display and edit it. We can even copy it from here or delete, but for now we will say post. When I hit on post, then the system will check which recurring journal entries can already be posted. As we are in the middle of April as I record this video, at least one journal entry will be generated now. So let's click on post. You can see this small pop-up window occurred. Here we will need to select up until which date postings should be processed. We will now say up until the 10th of April or we could click on this arrow over here and then select the posting date. For now this is fine, we will now click on post. You can see posting result, one recurring journal entry has been processed, one posting was done. You can also see that our recurring journal entry, so the initial template we created so to say, was updated and now we have here a section called posted total with 1 out of 12 documents being posted. The posting status is green, so all is fine. We will now click on this arrow over here to see what the system did. Here you can also see next posting date would be the 1st of May, so the 1st of the next month. We can inspect here our header section and the line items again, the text that we included, the recurrence rule, and then we have it the postings. And now you can see one journal entry was actually generated automatically by the system and a posting of 1000 was done. We can click on this journal entry and then on the Manage Journal Entries application to display all the information about this journal entry. So you can see here, the posting date was the 1st of April. Most of the information was copied from our recurring journal entry template. Here we also have a reference key, so we can always easily find this document again. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that the system now posted an expense to our office building rent account of 840.34 and also an expense to the tax account and on the other hand, a credit to the bank account. Also the tax information is included and stated that the tax base is on the gross entry. From here we could always process the journal entry further by creating correspondences, reversing it or creating new ones or even display the changes. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon where I have lots of informative blog posts about SAP and where we have a community chat. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.